It's the last month of the year, which means it is time once again to unbox a new shipment from Video Games Monthly. What's going on, everybody? I'm Jay. Welcome to Square Pegs. If you're new to the channel, I do this every month. I get a shipment from Video Games Monthly. I get five games a month. I unbox it. I show you what games are coming in. I don't look in the box first. I look right down this camera, and I find out at the same time you do. Typically after, actually, because I can't actually read the labels, and yeah, I'm old. That's what happens. What is Video Games Monthly? If you do not know, Video Games Monthly is a monthly subscription service where you're able to get three, four, five, or ten games sent to you every month. You go to their website, videogamesmonthly.com, you're able to curate your list of games that you own. They will not send you duplicates, and if they do, their customer service is spectacular and they will take care of you. But you guys aren't here to listen to me talk, as far as I'm aware. Oh, maybe you are. I don't know. And if you are, hey, glad you're here. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. But if you're not here to listen to me talk, you just want to see what games are in this box or... That's a good sound, man. That's I should do, like, Video Games Monthly ASMR and just do, like... Also, that was fun lighting right there. That was pretty cool. All right, so we're going to rip this guy open, free it from its priority mail prison, find out what's inside. What do I get games for? I get games for the Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, GameCube, Dreamcast, Wii U... Lots of stuff, really. Like, if it's a system, I chances are I get it, especially if it's older stuff. I don't go with the newer things just because I don't really need those. But older consoles, I got rid of most of my retro games years ago, and I'm just in the process of starting to collect those again, so I like getting stuff in. So let's find out what's inside this beautiful box from Video Games Monthly. All right. As always, cracking it open for the first time right now. We're going to find out... Oh, oh, we're starting off with something lovely. We got some bubble wrap. Bubble wrap is excellent. All right, we have Play the Past into the Future, a Video Games Monthly Bracelet that will never go on my wrist because it's too small. Uh, let's see, what's, let's feel what we have here. We got cards. We have... I got a 1-Up! I haven't gotten a 1-Up in months. That means I got an extra game this month. You are able to get 1 or 2-Ups, and I, there might be a 3-Up, I'm not sure, but every once in a while you're going to get one of these cards in your box. That means you get an extra game in your shipment. Always fun to get. All right, what else do we have here? We have our Premium Edition pre-order thing. Premium Edition games is awesome. They do limited run Switch games. The quality control is fantastic. The games they choose are excellent. Always amazing independent titles. Definitely worth checking out. And finally, this is our Video Games Monthly social card. And what this says is if you share your experience with Video Games Monthly on social media, you will be entered into a chance to win a free three-up box of games sent to you free of charge. Now, the nice thing about Video Games Monthly is these are yours to keep. You don't have to send them back. This isn't a rental service. This is an ownership program. So, what you pay, you get to keep. Now, we're going to feel around inside. What do we have? That is definitely a Famicom. That's definitely a Famicom. That's a Genesis. That's a Famicom. That's a Genesis. And that's a Super Nintendo. All right. We're going to do Super Nintendo last, because Super Nintendo is the one I get the least of, but three Famicom cartridges in here. That makes me excited. Let's find out what I got first. All right, we're going to go Genesis. Three, two, one. This is... Oh, Alex Kid the Enchanted Castle. That's cool. And actually, if you look, Alex has a price sticker across his face. It's a little piece of clear tape. I don't actually mind getting stickers on my games. That actually kind of gives a little bit of a history of where the game's from. Makes me excited. I don't mind stickers. I don't mind writing. just kind of like that stuff. This is cool. All right, let's check out Alex Kid in... The Enchanted Castle. Again, I told you, I'm old. Alright, so I should mention right off the bat that all these games were in pretty good condition. General cleaning had to be done. I had to run everything through with my 1UP card and 91% isopropyl alcohol, but I didn't have to take anything apart, didn't have to worry about contacts or anything like that. Everything worked first shot, popping it into my systems. And the first game we're talking about is probably the most impressive of the batch, and that is Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle. Now, I didn't grow up playing the Alex Kidd games. I completely missed them. I didn't actually play them until a few years ago, probably five or six years ago was the first time I had ever played any of them. And I'm really excited because other than the ones that have been re-released on the Switch, this is the first Alex Kidd game I've ever actually owned. This is the only 16-bit platform game starring Alex Kidd, so it's kind of a landmark thing there. This was released in 1989, so it's a very early Genesis game, and it's something to me that is really cool to receive. I even like the little sticker on the front of the cartridge, like I pointed out. I don't mind getting stickers on my cartridges. It shows the life cycle of the game, and I think that's pretty neat. I really think that of all the Alex Kidd games that I have played since then, eh, this is probably the weakest one. It's the least interesting gameplay-wise. I really don't feel the need to play rock, paper, scissors every single time I have to go into a room or anything like that. 
I do like that that gives you power-ups, but as far as in a gameplay element, eh, it's pretty middling at best. The game itself, it's, I mean, it's okay. It's, it's not nearly as good as other Alex Kidd games, but it could have been a lot worse. There are, there are worse playing games in this box, I can tell you that much, but... Alex Kidd and Enchanted Castle always need to add kind of these landmark original mascot games to a collection, and excited to have this one. All right, there you have it. Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle. Next up, we're gonna save. We're gonna do, get the Genesis stuff out of the way, and then Famicom will do Super Nintendo. All right, Genesis number two, three, two, one. This is, oh, this is Batman Forever. Uh, guys, what did I do to deserve this? I, I like your service, man. Oh, this is gonna be so bad. All right, and actually, <laughs> it's just man forever. Uh, because the tower, at man forever, good old at man. All right, let's take a look at what is truly one of the worst games I've ever played. So longtime viewers of the channel will remember that I did a Batman Pixel Evolution a few months ago. Actually, gosh, that's over a year ago now that I'm thinking about it. If you haven't watched that one, you should click the card up there right now because I'm really, really proud of that video. But one of the games that I covered in that Batman Pixel Evolution was this pile of crap. Batman Forever. The, oh, this, oh, oh, wow, this game's so bad. All right, how do, how do, where do I start? Like, I'm tongue-tied on how bad this game is. All right, so graphically, it looks like it was created on a potato. The audio is atrocious. Like, the voiceover in this game, the voice chip modulation, whatever you want to call it, the, the vocals. There we go. Vocals, that's the word we're looking for. The vocals in this game are so bad. Like, picking up a question mark and hearing Jim Carrey go, is, like, it's embarrassing how poorly performing this game is. The combat is awful. When you compare it to things that we had gotten before this with other Batman games, like the ones on the NES, the early Sunsoft releases, even Batman Returns, which was a spectacular beat-em-up, getting this pile of garbage is so insulting. But, I mean, when you base it on the source material of Batman Forever, I guess it's... I mean, it's right, right in line there. It's just neck and neck with how atrocious that movie... Oh, God, it's such a bad game. Uh, not... Not gonna hang on to this one for a long time, I can tell you that much. This one's this one's getting sent down the old dusty trail, ASAP. Yeah, I, when I did my pixel evolution of Batman's uh, visual appearance in video games a few years ago, uh, I remember playing Batman Forever and it was uh, atrocious. So, not excited to play it so much as I am just, you know, it's something to add to the collection, it's something I can flip down the road, not necessarily something I need to hang on to. now. All right, Famicom stuff. Famicom stuff I love getting. I absolutely adore collecting for the Famicom. Uh, it's something I wasn't able to do when I was younger. It's something I've wanted to do my whole life, and being able to do so now is awesome. All right, so here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, it's Load Runner. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, you can see right there, Load Runner. All right, Load Runner, let's take a look at it. So what do you get when you take a classic puzzle platformer, make it insanely hard, and toss in a mixture of complete indifference for the person who received the game? You get Championship Load Runner. I am awful at Load Runner. I have never enjoyed Load Runner. It is just not a game that I like. And getting the extra hard version of it on the Famicom doesn't make me intrigued to play it. I can tell you right now, I tried playing it for about 45 minutes. I didn't beat a single level because I'm just bad at it. I, I, it's just not a fun game to me. I do not like Load Runner. I admire Load Runner. I look at Load Runner and I say thank you for games that followed it. But the game itself, like Load Runner itself, just is not a game that works for me. And when you just ramp that difficulty up to like the nth degree, I'm out. I'm done. 100% out. Do not care. Do not want to play it. I, I wish that I wish that I had the type of brain that enjoyed this game because I know so many people that love it and so many people that have played it repeatedly and just think it's fantastic. But for me, it just it just doesn't work. Uh, I'm, I'm not knocking the game for anyone else. This is just a 100% a personal opinion. For me, this one doesn't work. It's it's not something that 
I'm going to be super duper excited to play moving forward, and I probably won't ever boot this one up again. This this will get flipped down the road, traded in somewhere, and uh, used to get a game that I'll actually enjoy. All right, there you have Load Runner. Okay, next, yet another Famicom game. Let's take a look. Three, two, one. This is oh, it's a Dragon Ball game. Uh, not a big Dragon Ball fan, but let's take a look at this one. All right, so this one right here, Dragon Ball Shenron no Nazo, was a really big case of deja vu. Like, I popped it in and I started playing it, and I goes, ah, I really enjoy this. This is really fun. This feels really familiar. And that's because it was released in North America as Dragon Power. And I have heard people say that, oh, this is Dragon Ball in Japan. And it never clicked in my head that Dragon Power, a game I used to play when I was a kid and I enjoyed, was a Dragon Ball game. And getting this one and playing it for probably about 20 minutes, it never just registered. Like, I was playing it, I was like, this feels so familiar, but I know I've never played it. Well, I have. I just, I'm an idiot and I didn't remember. This is the second Dragon Ball game on the Famicom. And this is excellent. It's an action game. It's a beat-em-up. It's just really clever. I really enjoy this one. I like the different movements around the screen. I like the combat. I like that you're able to jump. I just think this is a cool game. I'm not a huge Dragon Ball fan. Dragon Ball is not something that I've ever really enjoyed, but the gameplay in this game and the overall design and the look and the sound, it's it's kind of the total package. I really dig this one. It's a dirt cheap game, don't get me wrong. Like, it's worth nothing. But as far as like gameplay goes, this is probably my favorite one that I got in this box. This is a lot of fun and something I'm gonna go back to repeatedly. All right. Final Famicom game of the shipment, we have... Murder on the Mississippi! Sir, there has been a murder, and you are a suspect. Okay, hang on just a sec. Let me settle in, and I'll be right back. All right, we're gonna take a look at this one. I know nothing about this. I, I am willing to bet probably not gonna be able to play this one simply because it's gonna be in Japanese, and I don't read Japanese, but maybe there's an English patch out there, and I can actually run that on my Retron 5. We'll find out. But yeah, Murder on the Mississippi. Let's take a look at this one. Murder on the Mississippi. So as as I mentioned in the unboxing, or I'm going to mention in the unboxing, I don't remember when I said it, but I mentioned at some point in this video that maybe there's an English patch for this. And there is. There's, there's totally an English patch on ROM hacking. So that'll be, that'll be applied because... Yeah, what I know about this game so far is that you are on a river boat and you can fall through the floor. There are holes in the floor. It is a booby-trapped river boat. That's what I got. I got I got really nothing about this. So, so Murder on the Mississippi, also known as Murder on the Mississippi, The Adventures of Sir Charles Foxworth, which is a fantastic name, or known as Mississippi Satsujin Jiken, uh, which is Mississippi Murder Case on the Famicom, is an adventure game. And unfortunately, as an adventure game, I need to be able to read it, and I didn't install the English patch to read it because playing it, it's it's clunky as hell. Now, I will give it a shot down the road because I do love adventure games, and this particular era of adventure games is something that's near and dear to my heart. This is when I was first introduced to them. Back in the mid 80s, this is when I first started playing adventure games like this. And I'm definitely gonna give this one a shot and check out the English translation for it because I think there could be something really ambitious here, and it could be cool to play that on a Famicom. I've I've played the King's Quest game, and I've played a couple of other adventure games, but I've never played one quite like Murder on the Mississippi, so I definitely want to check this out. Uh, graphics are a little clunky, the audio is nothing to write home about, and I mean, it could just end up being a complete pile of crap, but I still want to check it out. I, I'm intrigued at the very least. Murder on the Mississippi has at least piqued my interest. It's a Jalico game. That's cool. I've never heard of that one. All right. And finally, for the Super Nintendo, this one feels to be in good shape. No physical damage to the label that I can feel, but three, two, one. Monopoly. All right. And finally, we come to Monopoly. I I wish I could tell you that this surprised me, 
and that this is the best version of Monopoly ever released and that this fixes every single problem with Monopoly that has ever existed and that if you are a fan of Monopoly, this is the Monopoly game for you. And let me tell you something, no. No, this is Monopoly. And it's awful. It's Monopoly. Like, I don't want to play this on a board game, let alone as a video game version of a board game. There's not even any music, man. Like, it's just bad. I don't like it. I don't like Monopoly. I've never, never been a fan of Monopoly. Like, I always convince myself that I like Monopoly for like a week every year. And then I play it. I'm like, okay, no, this game's awful. Why do I want to play it? And this is not that week to be convinced of it because like my reaction in the video with the expletive deleted was a legit reaction. Like that wasn't played up. That was me being upset because it's, 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 it's Monopoly. It's Monopoly. It's Monopoly. Why would I care? If you're an SNES Monopoly fan, if you are a huge lover of the board game Monopoly, more power to you. You're wrong. Like, I usually don't poo-poo people's opinions, but you're wrong. You're wrong. You have Stockholm Syndrome. You're wrong. This game's awful. I don't know the totals on these. I'm going to head over to price charting right now, get this stuff added up, and we will find out if I came out ahead this month. One hour later. All right, so I'm back. I came out this month at 4707 which is uh, right, pretty much right on the money for what I pay every month. So I can't complain about that. Quality of the games... I mean, you know, Monopoly sucks. I mean, there's no way around that. It's it's board game version of Monopoly isn't fun. Video game version of Monopoly isn't fun because it actually makes you follow the rules. You can't put house rules in there. So, eh. although getting three Famicom games, pretty awesome, and excited to get two Genesis cartridges as well. I love collecting for the Sega Genesis. So, getting some stuff that I wouldn't normally pick up is a nice thing. And anything I don't want, like I say, I can always flip down the road. So, this is a win for me. Let me know in the comments down below what you think the best game is I got this month. If you're new around here and you dig this video, there's a whole playlist right up here right now that you can check out. And you should probably hit that subscribe button. Do a couple videos a week. I would love to have you guys stick around. I talk about retro and modern games. And yeah, you know what? Just hang out. Kick the tires on the channel for a little bit. Until next time, folks, I've been Jay. Talk to you soon.